This episode of the What If Podcast is brought to you in part by Button Poetry, where poetry isn't dead. As the premier place online for live performance videos of spoken word and slam poetry, Button Poetry won't bore you like your high school English textbooks did. Find real stories you'll want to listen to and art you'll actually care about by visiting them today at buttonpoetry.com. In the beginning, there was darkness. Then, out of the void, came fire, smoke, metal. On the forge of imagination, an incredible thing began to take shape. A creature of raw, unbridled power. A creature with no equal. The very first of its kind. A thing so awesome, it could only be called a monster. In the beginning, there was Bigfoot. No town was too small, no city too large. Bigfoot roamed the land in search of action, excitement, and conquest. Today, monsters are everywhere. Monsters are real. But when the dust settles and the smoke clears, a cry is still heard across the land. Bigfoot. Welcome to the What If Podcast with your hosts, Spencer Worth Davis and Ryan Copperood. It's the What If Podcast. We're back again with another delightful episode of Weird Shit. Uh, hello to all our weird friends out on the internet. Hi, Spencer. Oh, hi. Thanks for checking in. I'm still a piece of garbage. <laughs> What's going on, dude? <laughs> uh, we have a guest with us today. We do. My bro. Welcome to the party. What's happening, Dan? Hey, how you guys doing? Hey. I have, a, I have a brief statement I prepared. If any of you got anything to say about me or my crew, you say it now. This isn't brief at all. You say it to my face. I I have to um I have to let the the listeners know that Dan, this is Dan's first time guesting, which we're very excited about. Uh, Dan has also done another first for a guest, which is brought his own soundboard, which means of the three people in the room, we have two soundboards, which yep. is double the normal amount of soundboards, uh, which may or may not be contributing to the general <laughs> volume get a of drops rowdy. in this episode. Yeah, you know, um, if you hadn't guessed by what you just heard at the very beginning of this episode, we're doing our first cryptozoology episode yes yes we have never ventured into cryptids before we have not i feel like it's come up but we've never actually done an episode that is directly addressing jokes on you guys this is now a cryptid only podcast (laughs) that's it we're just talking about chupacabra and loch ness monster and and interdimensional bigfoot (laughs) from here on out till infinity wouldn't we run out i feel like we'd run out oh yeah for sure but today bigfoot today is bigfoot uh what if what if Bigfoot's real? Uh, yeah. Bigfoot, Yowie, Sasquatch, Yeti, Skunk Ape. Skunk Ape is the best. It's by far the best one. Gi- I think that's what? a Florida... The Gi- Skunk Ape. Shit. It's a Florida... It's, it's, a Florida <laughs> it's Florida Bigfoot. Oh. Or yeah. right. Gigantopithecus. Gigantopith... Yeah. Gigantopithecus. Yeah. That's, that's Chinese, Indian, Vietnamese Bigfoot. Isn't that a, sort of? also a real maybe thing, though? Well, that is definitely a real thing. Oh, so, that is, so therefore not Bigfoot. <laughs> well, they think maybe. Like they it, are. it could be responsible for some Bigfoot sightings. It could be responsible for some Bigfoot. Or Yowies are just gigantopithecai that are still out there running around also, in the outback. Also this, yes, potentially. Yowie is Australian Bigfoot, right? Yowie? Yeah. Not Yahweh. That's... God. No. Yeah, that's Hebrew. definitely not Bigfoot. Okay. Y-O-W-I-E, I think is Australian Bigfoot. Can, <laughs> can we change it to what if Bigfoot was God? <laughs> well, we're gonna get close later in the episode. I got I got some stories for y'all. Oh okay. All right. buddy. Um where do we start with Bigfoot? Uh that's a great question. I, I think <laughs> I've always been hesitant to get into the cryptid stuff because it's Wait, what do you actually mean by that? Like Cryptids? this this general topic you've been Yeah, it's the the whole idea of like there might be an animal that we don't acknowledge is an animal. Right. Is not usually as exciting to me as like what if there are aliens or what if 
all the other crazy things that we talk about because we discover new animals and new species all the time. Yes. And like if there were apes in North America, would that really be, that wouldn't be that crazy to me. That seems possible. Would it not be that crazy to you? Cause I feel like not nearly as crazy as aliens taking no people way. out of their beds at night. No way, man. Like we'd be probably making a couple jokes about it on Twitter till like Wednesday, Thursday, and then it'd be normal <laughs> shit after that. I'm saying like new, new species are discovered probably daily and we never hear about them. Yeah. But I feel like uh, the evidence of a new primate that I would say general suggestions are that it's more intelligence and more man like than any other ape in existence do we recorded dolphins having a full-blown conversation and nobody cared but then why the fascination with bigfoot because it's it's just like it's become folklore at this point but folklore has roots in both reality and fascination for a reason right i'm, I'm not saying that it it uh i, I don't know like it, it would explain all of those stories in the least interesting way possible like oh there was just an animal that we didn't know about and now we do this is amazing spencer's shitting on this episode within like from, six from minutes the of the episode well, starting don't worry i found crazy bigfoot <laughs> stories we'll get to crazy bigfoot <laughs> so, stories but we, uh yeah just with like the cryptozoology thing in general like the the folklore is the fun part of it to me yeah and that's like the, the fun way to look at it and i hope that these things don't get solved because then you run out of fun stories. I get that. Like I the Loch Ness Monster, whatever it is, if there's just like a big, I mean, there's, there's tons of stuff in oceans that we don't know about. Like we didn't think giant squids were real until we found a giant squid. Yeah, that's real. I guess like the scientific implications to me of there being potentially like a, an interim species that has intentionally hidden itself from like the human population because it's more intelligent than other apes. Like well, other we don't apes, know that either though. We don't, but this, I think the, the generally accepted suspicion is that like they are a, a, a hidden creature of sorts in which is why we haven't gotten any like good concreteness of them. You want to know something about most people who have suspicions about Bigfoot? Tell me <laughs> they're wrong. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know. What? Uh, <laughs> damn it. Uh, I think the obvious interesting part would be that it's closely, if it's real, it's closely related to us, right. which makes it inherently more interesting than a squid, I guess. Yeah. That that would be my one like and pushback on it being more interesting. It's like maybe there's a maybe there's a smart humanoid ape that has been evading our discovery of it somehow for the last whatever 120. I mean, you can go back even farther to the folklore to like the older generations of Native Americans and things like that. And that I'll have stories about hairy wild men in the woods and on the mountains and shit. Like that shit goes way the fuck back, way before like the the Patterson film. I watched the uh, Ancient Aliens episode about Bigfoot today because of course there's one. Oh, mm. what? Yeah. Man. Uh, spoiler alert. They think he's an alien. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally about to ask the question. Oh, well, I guess you... the rest of my night's open because I don't have to watch that after this. <laughs> nice. Yep. Inter um, no, extra, extraterrestrial Bigfoot is their their leading hypothesis. They think that uh, uh, who's the who's the guy from the the Bible? The really tall guy. The really tall guy from the Bible. Yeah. God. You'd think he'd be the tallest. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really, the tallest. He's big. That's really how they settled things back then. Just whoever was tallest was in charge. I, I don't know, dude. Steve's God now. He he shot up like a sprout. He's 17. No, He's tall fucking, as fuck. Uh, Steve's God now. Uh, Goliath. <laughs> oh, Jesus, They were talking dude. about how Goliath the was... The really tall guy from the Bible was the best, like, the best thing I you could do to I get promise Goliath. you people have been screaming Goliath at their phones for the last 30 seconds. <laughs> oh, and fuck. I also promise you that no one else said God in response to that question. I mean... <laughs> but they, uh, yeah, Ancient Aliens was telling me about how Goliath was, was a Bigfoot. A big... Oh, a wild hairy man. Uh, real quick, some uh, a grammar ground rule. Big feet? It, it's Bigfoots. Plural, right? Um, Let's just go with that, yeah. 
Can can a can a group of Bigfoots or a, a group of Sasquatches be a squanch? No. Damn. Fuck you guys, I'm going home. We have we have encroached too far on Rick and Morty's <laughs> copyright already. <laughs> no way. We just uh, we just talked about we'll loving them. We'll call them we'll call them Yowies. Okay, speaking of Bigfoot showing up on uh, television, uh, before we maybe dive into some of the history of Bigfoot, I need to also tell you guys about the series Finding Bigfoot on Animal Planet. Do you guys remember this show? Have you guys ever seen the show? Not really. I know it exists, but I never checked it out. Okay, so... Spoiler alert, they didn't find him. <laughs> shit. S- spoiler alert, they're going on their eighth season, starting in 2017. Still out there, bro. They have not once gotten photographic evidence of Bigfoot, and I would like to very quickly, as a game that I found quite enjoyable earlier this morning, recite to you a handful of the episode titles of the television (laughs) show Finding Bigfoot on Animal Planet. Hit me with it. Swamp Ape. Yep. Solid. Fishing for Bigfoot in Oregon. Frozen Bigfoot. Wait, 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 wait. Yep. Bigfoot's in a lake? Fishing for Bigfoot in Oregon would in fact imply okay apparently on this episode they Big, tried Big to Foots use can swim i guess a rabbit to lure a sasquatch out of a hole Sounds i've heard they, cool. they live in caves sometime uh i i'm i'm only taking highlights season two baby bigfoot peeping I mean. bigfoot canadian bigfoot mm. eh? Mm-hmm. buckeye bigfoot virginia is for bigfoot lovers moonshine and bigfoot Who's your Bigfoot? I think that's the only one that has a correlation is the moonshine and Bigfoot. <laughs> the I mean, final... he can't just walk into a liquor store. He's got to he's got to make his own shit. <laughs> the final episode. Doesn't many see... pockets sold his money? <laughs> that's not what I meant. I mean, people drinking moonshine till they see Bigfoot. Doesn't many but... pockets? He can't keep a wallet. That's more interesting that he makes his own alcohol. I actually did read a story today about Bigfoot shaking a guy down for his pants, though. <laughs> nice. We'll get to that nice. later. Final episode of season two called "Holy Cow, It's a Bigfoot." <laughs> I bet it wasn't. <laughs> uh, season three, Mother Bigfoot, CSI Bigfoot, C- <laughs> dances with Bigfoot. <laughs> C- CSI Bigfoot, like Bigfoot's investigating crimes? Correct. Yo, is this show hiring? Because I could probably get a job real fucking quick. Bigfoot and Wolverines, bacon for Bigfoot, Bigfoot hoedown, what? Badlands Bigfoot. Jesus. Indonesia's little Bigfoot. Do they have to have the word Bigfoot in every title? Peekaboo Bigfoot. Uh, no, there are some that don't have that. Okay. Uh, Bigfoot loves barbecue. I mean, who doesn't? Bigfoot the friendly ghost. Well, ghost Bigfoot is a new one. I didn't yeah. come across any good ghost story Bigfoots. In this episode, the team travels to Illinois to meet a man who claims to have recorded Bigfoot howls in his own backyard. Do you think there's uh we should pitch some some new titles to Chuck Tingle? That are related to Bigfoot or <laughs> Sasquatches? Haunted by Bigfoot in my butt, maybe? <laughs> 100%, 100% nailed it. Surf's up, Sasquatch. Uh, we're, Jesus. We're, All right. I, I, think we, I think we've heard enough. I'm yeah, just gonna that was sh- like 30. I'm going to shout <laughs> I'm gonna shout random episode titles at you guys when Great. we're in the middle of something. Dan, I read yesterday that Wright-Patterson Air Force Base houses a dead Bigfoot. I don't. Can you confirm? I I can't confirm that. I guess um, mm. I did live at that Air Force Base for a little bit when I was a kid, um, but I don't think they have any Bigfoot. You there. never saw any any yowies or skunk apes. Oh, I guess it wouldn't be a skunk ape in Ohio. But no, no Bigfoot. Lots of other weird shit, but no such no as Bigfoots. So, oh, <laughs> uh, according to a lot of people, I'm not have Dan on here and not tell his weird Wright <laughs> right. Patterson Air Force so, like, stories. Cool. I don't. I don't really know, you know, who knows what's true or not, but, um, so a lot of people say that's where they took all the shit from, uh, Roswell. the Roswell incident, um, and up to and including a, a live alien being, whoa, um, that seemed, why there? Those are not close to each other. Or was this like much later? <sighs> I'm not sure. I think this was actually like right after it happened. Or like yeah. pretty close after it happened. It was. Um, I'm not sure to. why, and I've, I've talked to my dad about it. I actually saw him yesterday and asked him about it, and he's like, well, he's like, there's, um, you know, this giant building there that's basically just like off limits to everyone and like top secret. Um, so I would assume that's what that is. There's some weird shit in there. Yeah, yeah. I've sure. also read that a lot. Maybe that's where Bigfoot is. Well, I've heard that most of the, of the base or a good portion of it is underground as well. 
See that? I or don't. Is that just some weird internet shit? Yeah, I don't think that's the case, okay. man. Because like, um, you know, this was quite a while ago. I'm sure it's probably different now. But like, we could just like, you know, we lived on the base. We could go from our house to like go bring my dad lunch or something. Um, you know, without having to do any like crazy extra security stuff. I guess we were already on there and lived there, so we had some right. kind of clearance to be there. Um, but you know. I would guess if there was any super crazy shit there, it was probably in that building, and I guess it could be underground. You know, that's kind of like a recurring theme you hear with right. a lot of like military stuff, whether it's like in relation to some sort of like ETs or um, just like secret shit they don't want people to know about in general. Did you ever leave your house and be like, I'm going to try to like, go in somewhere I'm not supposed to go into just to see what's behind those doors? No, no, that Were would certainly mean you would probably die. I, I wouldn't attempt that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, really? As a little kid on the base? Man, I mean, yeah. What? I mean, it They're wasn't like shoot put a out kid. The... Really? Damn, dude. I mean, making like the. Oh, I don't base. know, dude. I don't know. I guess I never wanted to test it and find out. But probably. Uh, I was well, also thinking about other movie. stuff too. You know, like playing video games and listening to music. How old and, were you at the time? Um, I think I moved there when I was like nine, and probably left when I was. 11 or 12. Okay. Yeah. A few years. Yeah. I got to imagine your dad would not be psyched about finding out that you were just wandering around either. Yeah, that's another thing, man. Like, if nothing I, else, you got to face the wrath of your dad when you get home. Well, yeah, I just feel like that would have been worth, like, at least a butt beating or two to, <laughs> like... Thanks, Chuck Tingle. <laughs> <laughs> to, to go explore some my uh, heart is a beating butt <laughs> bisexual bigfoot blast um, me in the butt <laughs> not biz. <laughs> not biz. yeah so i don't know i guess it, i never really thought to do that i mean i've always been kind of interested in this stuff probably from even an earlier age than that you know whether it's like bigfoot or but you probably didn't aliens know. and all that kind of stuff but i knew it there was like some secret stuff <laughs> on the base and like at other bases that we lived at but it never crossed my mind to try to mess with that because that would mean certainly a lot of trouble for me and if not my whole family like yeah, there's there's shit you can do where you could like get kicked out of the military or like my dad could be like arrested or something like that so i just chilled and rode my bike and listened to rap and played my game boy or whatever that sounds like a better idea than getting shot in the yeah, face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Trying so, to find a frozen Bigfoot. Guy on topsecret.com for above topsecret.com forums, uh, Dan says you're wrong. Just wrong slash I don't really know. We're going they, with wrong. It, it, it was a really most big Most things wrong. on above top secret yeah. are wrong. Well, so. it's, a, it's a really big base too. Um, you know, that was quite a while ago that I lived there, but, you know, I, there could be stuff I didn't see. Um Probably. You know, there also was like a huge like Chances air are. and space museum that would like rivals like the Smithsonian. And stuff. So there's a lot of cool stuff there. Um, but yeah, I just it never too. never occurred to me to try to cause problems there. That was probably smart. <laughs> yeah, probably smart. I'm 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 less familiar with the consequences of a military lifestyle, so I'm just like, go find the aliens, baby Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Bring him back to the future. Yeah, I just, I don't know. You seen Back to the Future? Yes, guys. <laughs> you guys. Check you should do a whole just, episode about movies. Dude, yeah, I was, like, I what if Ryan saw all these movies? We actually I, I've, talked about patreon.com slash what if podcast. I've, I've wanted to we start a section it. on our website called Movies Ryan Hasn't Seen where I just review movies. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait. I thought it was supposed to be I review movies I haven't seen. Oh, that'd be fun. <laughs> with, we could do both. With like whatever contextual, like I'll, cultural knowledge I I'll understand pick a movie about it. And then just have you review it. Okay, deal. All right, Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Who is he? Where is he? Is um, it a he? What is it? Does Bigfoot have balls? He and a she. Okay. And a baby. Oh, young baby Bigfoot. Young baby Bigfoots. There is there's plenty of uh I'm throwing quotations, evidence of baby Bigfoots, uh, as well as uh, Mama Bigfoots. Um, Bigfoot is in the Pacific Northwest primarily. I don't know, man. We get, you got Asian Bigfoots. You got so there are okay, Australian so, Bigfoots. So probably the, one by Duluth somewhere. You got Duluthian Bigfoots. I found I found a video <laughs> last week while I was researching this that was Bigfoot on the Superior Shore, and I was See? like, shout out to Minnesota. Minnesotan Bigfoots. Minnesotan Bigfoots. Um, Bigfoots, bi yes. Bigfoot 
Well, we talked about a little bit about this, but Bigfoot has roots in a bunch of different cultures. There are versions of sort of what we call Bigfoot. Big, tall, ape-like, wild beasts that are hidden or live in caves or live elsewhere. They're cryptic, if you will. Cryptic, if you will, um, in like a shitload of different cultures. Um, Primarily, though, now, contemporarily, I would say, the sightings... The evidence is in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. A, thir- a third of the sightings and reportings happen in the Pacific Northwest of the United States and up into Canada as well. It's because they crossed the land bridge from Asia, bro. I'm I'm not entirely I'm not entirely against the concept that gigantotho to gigantotho to gigantotho to attempting at Kinkos. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you really Thank disappoint you. me. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, with the hot take. Uh, Gigantopithecus. Gigantopithecus. Pithecus, thank you. Uh, walked its big ass. So th- this is a real, we didn't actually get into this. This is a real fossil found across Asia and India um, of a prehistoric primate alive up to, they say, potentially 100,000 years ago. That Shit was ain't regular, man. Not regular at all. A 10 foot tall, 1,200 pound primate uh, would have been at the time and today by far the biggest primate that we're aware of like in the history of primates so it back when russia was connected to alaska or however that works yes right, it just wandered across there and then across down, the land bridge down into canada and into the pacific northwest of the u.s and there there it lives being all big footed and scary and smelly <laughs> that is the, that is a uh, that is an interesting take that I never had known until we started researching this. That everyone is like Bigfoot stinks. Oh yeah, Bigfoot is a stinky skunk ape, dog. stinky man. That's how God's name. Oh, is that really where that comes yeah. from? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's funny. Some of the it's people an ape that smells like a skunk. Oh, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Some of the people on the internet who claim to have encountered a Bigfoot claim to know it because they're like I was driving my car down a road and it got real stinky real fast and I was like there's gotta be a Bigfoot around yep. here somewhere like, yep. alright bro I was listening to a podcast last night uh, about Bigfoot stories and one guy's story was that when I was walking when I was a kid and I was walking to the park with my brother for a second it smelled really bad mm-hmm. and I knew a Bigfoot was that near that was his whole story That's that, it? that was the time he encountered Bigfoot something stunk in his neighborhood Wow. Therefore, That's Bigfoot. N- not not enough evidence, my guy. <laughs> you, we don't believe you. You need more people. All right. So um, Pacific Northwest Bigfoot, <clears throat> but then maybe he, she, they ventured out across the U.S. Um, well, that have, would, there, have there ever been Hawaiian Bigfoot sightings? Can that's they, actually can they swim. That's a good question. I don't can they I, build boats. I don't actually know the question to that. I don't or the answer to that. I Blasted don't. in the butt by boat building Bigfoot. <laughs> Chuck Tingle, if you need book titles. <laughs> we got you. We got you. Um, Who has the answers? <laughs> um, I like how much thunder there is. There's <laughs> a lot of thunder. Maybe too much thunder. Um, um, all right. The, the idea would be that, yes, Bigfoot traveled across the country because at some point, Bigfoot got to North Carolina. Oh, wow. Well, unless he swam across the other way. Uh, that would be a very, very long road for bigfoot i've, I've heard bigfoot has very good endurance yeah that is something i'm i'm not specifically aware of hey uh <clears throat> did you succeed in in investing in bigfoot i did not i've still failed in investing in bigfoot um not not investing in Bigfoot, the concept or the individual. <laughs> Dan got the thinking <laughs> the thinking face emoji big, on right big, now. Bigfoot's looking for investors. Um, <laughs> he's got if, a new startup. He's, he's, he's going to put out a mixtape, and he needs some backing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just <laughs> bars like the whole time. Bigfoot, if you need studio time, get at us. We can help you out. Dan's got beats. I'll mix it for you. <laughs> I'll be your hype man, just yeah. doing more yeah. Chewbacca yells. Um, no, BGFT, if you Google this, this is a real... It's the stock symbol. Technically a real stock symbol. You can you can go find and you can buy Bigfoot they are, stock. They're struggling right now, so I'm sure they would share. appreciate the any investment. 
their entire business model is the creation and distribution of Bigfoot related digital and physical materials and documentaries and DVDs and CDs and ebooks and real books and shit. And somehow they went public in 2013. Yeah. I had, and, which <laughs> so not not only did they go public but they uh their IPO was $50 a share. Which for those of you who are not super familiar with like the stock exchange is like Twice as high as most very popular like social media SaaS startups. I was gonna go say, didn't, for. didn't uh, Facebook open around fifty? Yeah, well, I think it was less than that actually. Yeah. Uh, so four years later, BGFT is currently sitting at fifteen cents a share. Ouch! As you, <laughs> as you, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's tight for for a Bigfoot right now. <laughs> as you may imagine, uh, a lot of the information you would want about Bigfoot is already findable on the internets. Without requiring you to buy DVDs off of the internet, I read an interview with the uh, the founder of of uh, Bigfoot. Oh, they're they're also one thing you left out about their business model. Oh yeah, they're they're offering a one million dollar bounty for anyone that Ooh. can help them find Bigfoot, and uh, they have a hotline set up. Nice. So if you have information about Bigfoot that you'd like to contribute to them and maybe claim part of that one million dollar bounty, yes, you can call them at uh eight one four nice four four two three three nine four, which is actually one number off from my phone number minus the area code. We're not going to tell you guys what number it is. Yeah, though. you got to figure it out, and then you can call me about Bigfoot. <laughs> Do it. Uh, <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're having a tough year though. They're down to fifteen cents a share. Um, According to their uh, their filings with the SEC, as you said, they they develop documentaries, they sell DVDs, uh, and they they hold exhibitions of Bigfoot related materials. Ooh, yep. Um, what would that be? Exhibitions? They're like Bigfoot conferences and stuff. Oh yeah, I guess I was thinking like physical Bigfoot evidence. I guess that would be like they're molds and people like put raccoon hair on stuff and say it's Bigfoot hair. And that's real. Uh, they they could maybe like bottle up some smells. I saw Just some fart people in a mason jar and say that they they got <laughs> they found Bigfoot stink. <laughs> Gross. Wait, so what are they going to do if someone finds Bigfoot? They don't okay. have a million dollars. Well, they'll make a million dollars if they find Bigfoot. There are well, there are also companies that will insure these things. Okay. So like a lot of these co- contests and bounties are so if if we don't have a million dollars but we want to offer a million dollar bounty to somebody who finds Bigfoot. There are companies who will say, yeah, we'll back you for a million dollars. If well, you, if you give us 20 bucks a month or whatever, mm. whatever that rate would be. And I'm guessing it depends on how likely that thing is to happen. Man, imagine your job is like a lifelong insurance adjuster and like claims maker. And someday somebody's like, Hey Dave, um, got a weird phone call for you today. <laughs> We're going to need you to go out. How much do you know about Bigfoot? <laughs> um, last year, they uh, they spent $25,000. <clears> and uh, their revenue was $5,440 for yep. the year. Yeah. Hey, what's so, their website so we can encourage people? Searchingforbigfoot.com. Searchingforbigfoot.com. If you want to see that BGFT, wait, is this like price tampering? <laughs> if we if we encourage people to go buy stuff. So We're not encouraging them up. to buy stock. We're just saying that they have a website That's and that true. they are a publicly traded company, maybe, although we couldn't find any actual evidence of this. I think, well, <laughs> there is evidence of it because they, they are still a stock ticker but i think a lot of places won't uh actually indulge it because it looks like a penny stock which like comes off of most legitimate trading platforms so i'll let uh the founder of bgft speak for himself about why you should invest in this company yes this is again from that cn cnbc article he said quote those who invest in bigfoot bigfoot projects investment incorporated is their official title sweet uh I think it'll be a hell of a market to reckon with down the line because we're going to be doing very well. <laughs> Could you imagine if we brought back one of those creatures? Think about it. That is his direct quote. We're going to be doing well. Think about if we found think Bigfoot. Think about it. Think about it. If you think about it, it's still a horrible investment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit. You're better I thought off about throwing it, your money out the window. Hey, dude, I thought about it. 
I didn't give you 15 cents to go find Bigfoot. I'm going to I'm going to start a business and I'm going to create a business plan deck and slide 2 is just like Q4. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. You got any uh, specific Bigfoot stories you want to get to? Well, I don't think we can I don't think we can get weird until we tell the most classic of Big, Bigfoot tales. Well, which one is that? The Patterson oh. and Gimlin film. Should we should we tell that? Should we take a break first and then tell that story? We're getting close to break nah, time. Yeah, we're fine. We can tell a story first. All right. Fuck it. We make our own schedule. We make our own you schedule. You need a break. Hit pause. This is, my, this is my life. It's not radio. We don't actually need breaks anyway. We just mess with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the Patterson-Gimlin film. Has everybody here watched it? I have. In this yeah. room? Yep. Mm-hmm. Everybody's seen it? Mm-hmm. Um, you probably have too if you're listening to this. It's like the Bigfoot film. It is the Bigfoot film. Uh, there are many. I had to I had to wade through a bunch to uh, to get to this one. I was actually on YouTube today with a guy who said I compiled all of the best uh, Bigfoot sightings ever in one like super long video. And I'm watching it for like 45 seconds, and he's just randomly inserting pictures of like great apes into <laughs> into the Bigfoot video. I'm like, bro, come on, that that's I just mean, like an ape in Africa. You, you can't. need some context. I guess so. I guess so. Maybe you can you can just point out the differences so that when you do see Bigfoot, you can distinguish it from an orangutan or a gorilla. <laughs> yeah, right. Also, if you're in California, it's probably not an orangutan or a gorilla. Uh, there's that. Um. So speaking of the Northwest of the United States, where most sightings are. Uh, familiar. Uh, the Patterson Gimlin film was shot in Northern California uh, in Humboldt County in the year 1967. Uh, two gentlemen with the last names of Patterson and Gimlin, hence the Patterson Gimlin film, uh, are riding upstream through the through the woods on a beautiful sunny day. Um, they basically round a big tree and adjacent to the creek that they were riding up on horseback is Bigfoot. And they were out there to find Bigfoot though, right? They were hunting. Yeah, they were squatching. They were squatching. <laughs> That's my favorite verb for Bigfoot hunting. Squatching. squatching. Is, we're going squatching. Is the best. Not squatching. Not squatching. Squatching, as in the Sasquatch. So they just stumbled upon a Bigfoot conveniently walking directly across their path. They sure and say they, so. And he was moving slowly enough for them to set up their camera that they also, well, I guess if they were squatching, you bring a camera. You do bring a camera. Um, anyway, long story short, this has become like the quintessential Bigfoot sighting and Bigfoot video. It's the sort of sunny light, long arm swinging kind of across a river. He takes a nice look sight. back at them yep, you to get, acknowledge them, but just be like, yeah, go ahead, bros. Bro, go ahead, F- bros. Film me walking. Yep. Um, over the entirety of their lifetimes, they have never um, recanted the encounter. Patterson, the one of the two duos, has done appearances and done a whole bunch of like stuff around it. He did. Vice versa? Yeah. Yep. Wait, what do you mean? He died not long after. It was like five years afterwards? Yeah. Oh, that's right. And then Gimlin was the one who like, he did. He's, f- he's still out here. But he's only done like a, a handful of things. He was like hesitant to be associated with it for an extended period not of time. Not anymore. He, he just put out a documentary about not it. Not anymore. But he was for a while like not super about it. But they both have sort of uh, to their graves, one of which was sooner than the others. Um, Gimlin's still alive. Th- that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that um, that it was real, that it was a real thing, that they really saw what they saw. Um, if you just go Patterson Gim- Gimlin film on YouTube, you'll see it if it isn't something that you have seen before. There's a, a stabilized version floating around that's kind of yeah. kind of nice. Because um, it was a little little shaky. Yeah. I I don't know. I don't know. I have a... It feels... Like, why is it... That all of the video evidence looks like a dude in an ape suit. Well, I mean, you know why. <laughs> I know, but <laughs> sometimes with these, so like this one especially, there's a bunch of stuff out there about like, oh, it's it's been examined and by uh, Hollywood costume experts, and right. it's been examined by anthropologists who determined that the its gait was real or blah 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 blah, and then. I'll see that same stuff about other ones, like this audio that I'm going to play later. 
It's like it was analyzed by an audio engineer and he said it's definitely Bigfoot. And that's right. just a guy like screaming into a microphone. I, it doesn't look convincing to me when I watch it. No. Like if you just showed that to me without any context, it looks like a dude in a suit. Yeah. And then when you factor in, why was he just walking out in the middle of nowhere past people that he definitely saw and looks back, like looks back at them. Right. And you managed to jump again, jump down off your horse, set up your camera and film 10 seconds of him. I mean, it is a little shaky, but still it's like, but like wait, without having to focus without having to, like all, all this stuff. Yeah. It seems very convenient that they got the footage in the first place. And then the footage just doesn't look that unnatural to me. It looks like a guy in a suit. And from that distance and with that resolution, I don't know how you could conclusively say that it isn't. Yeah, I would also think that uh, if there was this, you know, creature out here that hasn't been found or interacted with other humans, they would probably have a different reaction, whether that's to try to get a closer look at the humans or to run away from the humans. I don't think it would just keep chilling like it's, you know, going to the bathroom at the barbecue and like walking away all casually. To the two guys filming him. For sure. Right. Right. I feel like that's like the biggest flaw in this thing for me. Because it's like, it's not a, a a wild animal regardless of its intelligence level is going to have a different reaction. Right. Like, most if you likely encounter to get a wild it. animal in the woods, it's either coming at you or it's going the fuck away from you. Yeah. Fight or flight. Probably probably flight in right. most cases, right. unless it's some kind of predator or maybe, you know, some sort of um and ape might be curious. If you, you see know? Two, if you're in two foot, things roughly your size fifty feet away from you, you're probably just gonna leave. Yeah. Right? I, I mean, would think so. Yeah. I mean it's it's an eight foot, you know, five hundred pound, you know, squatch. It might, it might be it, like I'm it good. It doesn't really look like it in the video. Well, no, I mean the the Don't general we? sighting <laughs> characteristic is that they right. are taller than humans and way more than humans. And the only thing that looks kind of different to me that would make it be maybe not a person is that it has really really long arms in this picture that I'm looking at. Yeah, but that doesn't really the make da- up for the rest of it. The dangle yeah. of the arms is. But but again, like that could just like if you had an ape suit from any True. California. Like, Let me get one with extra long arms. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think the the thing for me with Bigfoot that's always like, it's always difficult with these certain types of things is, it's fascinating to me how much they self perpetuate in a way where, part of me wants to look at that perpetuation and go the perpetuation of this story the the number of i mean just go on youtube and and try to see all of the bigfoot sighting videos on youtube you can't you'll spend 3 years doing it and there'll probably be that many more uploaded in the time and like yeah some of them are weird but like a lot of them seem kind of you know like manufactured And yet at the same time, it's like the perpetuation of some of these stories is so fascinating to me in the way that I go, how could it keep going over and over and over again for so long without there being a single ounce of truth to it? Well, and it's the whole idea of they don't all have to be true. Just one of them has to be. And a lot of the people- I don't even know what true necessarily means in this sense. If, If Bigfoot is real, which would, you know, is kind of the premise of this, like- Is there some undiscovered, you know, human-like slash ape-like species like walking around in the woods that we haven't found or don't know about? But that's not even the consensus amongst all people who believe in Bigfoot. True. And the report, the the reports and the sightings are anywhere from like it was six feet tall to it was twelve feet tall to it came out of a portal to it came out of a UFO to it came out of a cave to it kidnapped me and held me hostage for a year. Yeah, like there is so damn. Huh? A year? Yeah, <laughs> dude, I'm going to tell that story in a minute. That story's um, fucking awesome. Before you get to that, I just want to ask, is there like a second place to the Patterson-Gimlin film? Is there any other kind of video evidence or photographic evidence that we could look at? Or not like, Is that really a thing? I mean, not like to that, um, not to that level of notoriety, I would say. Uh, in 2000, and, was it 2013 when Bifro dropped their two little video clips? I'm not familiar. I think it was 2013. Beefro, Beefro, the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization. Uh, oh, that's Bigfoot Field. I thought it was Bigfoot 
research organization. Oh no, Bigfoot Field Researchers mm. organization um, mm. is an organization yes. that has. It's a bunch of like bunch of people, scientists who go hunting for Bigfoot. Can we join? Uh, Do they have meetings uh, we can attend? That's a good question. Yeah. Is there a Minnesota oh, chapter? Oh boy, why did we? Uh, why did we not think about um, that? You could while well, you're looking for that, right? Yeah, yeah. Let me see uh, if I can. Dan, you could look at videos of bears walking on their hind legs. Okay. Ever seen that shit? Yeah. 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 Um, I'd also like to state that if you guys do do another field trip, I would like to be considered for your first guest that goes on a field trip guest with field you. Trip? Bet. <laughs> yeah. Bet. Bro, can we become <laughs> can we become the Miss Frizzles of weird shit? Like ma- the magic school bus just goes to weird places and we just Take bring acid and go go to bring a classroom Bigfoot full conferences? of friends with us to yes. weird shit. Uh yeah, I'm sure there are Bigfoot conventions and stuff, right? Uh yeah. Gotta there be. has to be. There has to be. Somebody's taking that free money off of people um <laughs> yeah adrian erickson uh led a group that was later called the erickson project um they released video in 2013 it was um hd video taken in the wooded areas of kentucky um of what exactly of a squatch a, a couple squatches mm. a couple different squatch situations uh i would play it right now but that would make for bad uh bad radio so mm. we're not going to do that but google it baby google it baby um new bigfoot evidence screened as experts claim proof of existence is on abcnews.go.com scroll down maybe ryan will have remembered to put a link to it I will have remembered to put a link to it. <laughs> we'll see. No Shots worries. fired. Uh, Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> I get a, I get a lot of them. We, whatever. We reference so much random shit on this show. Uh, now would maybe be a time to yeah, take a break. And we then, tell you what. We'll, we're going to show that to Dan. You guys go watch that same video footage. And then from when Adrian. we come back, can I talk about getting kidnapped by Bigfoot? And when we come back, we're going to take we're going to push Bigfoot yes. further into the realm of weird. Yes. With Spencer's Bigfoot portals. What if you got impregnated by interdimensional Bigfoot after he jumped out of a portal and kidnapped you? Um, the What If Podcast. <laughs> This episode of the What If Podcast is brought to you in part by Button Poetry. Check them out right now by visiting buttonpoetry.com. Button Poetry is nothing like the traditional poetry you heard in high school, and they're certainly not the same old, boring, dead guys that are going to put you to sleep. Button Poetry features poets of all ages, races, sexual orientations, and backgrounds, and as a poetry press and an online destination, for spoken word and slam poetry videos button poetry publishes poetry that moves people they believe that real current stories and real current voices are more necessary now than ever you know everyone says changing the world with art is impossible but at button poetry they're sure going to try so check out everything they have to offer there's books there's videos there's commentary there's learning there's education there's so much stuff uh that you can get by checking them out at buttonpoetry.com today you will fall in love with poetry all over again or maybe for the very first time You guys want to hear Bigfoot? <laughs> I yeah. mean, I don't it's, know. It's, uh, yeah, you do. I I'm, I'm, don't know why I'm asking. You want right. to hear Bigfoot. All right. <laughs> what in the goddamn... <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> so those are what are called the Sierra sounds. Uh if That's you're trying to if you're trying to Google this. Uh they were allegedly recorded um by some some guys over the course of several years uh just outside of Yosemite National Park. And uh they claim that they recorded 
several hours of Bigfoots talking to each other, calling each other, walking around, stomping on stuff, knocking on trees like like Bigfoots do apparently. <laughs> Bigfoots be doing. That is that is a thing that they, they knock and like bang stuff together to communicate over long distances, I guess. It kind of sounded like there was some language in there. Yeah, I think that's probably because it was a guy trying to make it sound like there was some language in there. Well, it, it it's kind of interesting though. <laughs> but <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure, that's real. Well, that's an excellent point, Spencer. <laughs> that's real. I, uh, yeah, there. Well, we're gonna get into uh, some stories in a second. But the uh, there are people who think that they can speak to each other and can actually like they actually have their own language. Yeah, I I reminded me of uh, one of the things I read was about uh, going back to like we said like the the Patterson video was in the '60s, but stories of Bigfoot related things have gone way back into the 1800s, and uh, in the late 1800s and early 1900s, there was this uh, this reporter who published a bunch of stories in a Canadian newspaper about um, the. I don't, I'm going to totally ruin this pronunciation, but it's basically like a tribe in Canada of native people who uh, basically as indigenous people believed that the Sasquatches in the area avoided white people, which is part of the reason that they were like sort of cryptic and spoke some version of the Lillooet language, which is like their native tongue which I thought was kind of a fascinating uh, take on like, yeah, of course you don't see them very often because they speak our language and they don't fucking like you. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. A lot of people have uh, hypothesized that there's a connection between native Americans and Bigfoot in that, like they have stories that sound sort of like Bigfoot going back a lot further. Right. And there were native American people in the Pacific Northwest before there were ever white people over right. there. And that there might be, if Bigfoot is a thing, that they might have a connection to it or more knowledge about it. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. Is it time? Can I talk about interdimensional Bigfoot kidnappings yet? <laughs> I wish you would. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I okay. mean, we we just so, heard we just heard Bigfoot. We might as well take it fully off the rails. There's a there's a fantastic book available on uh, Kindle for just seven ninety nine. So you know it's real. Called The Sasquatch People and Their Interdimensional Connection by Kewani Lasperitis. And, uh... Tight. Yep, yep. It's the the second in a series of books about Bigfoot. The first one is uh, The Sasquatch People and the UFO Connection. Because a lot of people do report seeing UFOs in the area of also seeing Sasquatches. Some what? people have seen Sasquatches actually beamed down from UFOs. Whoa, that's real. And and uh, hypothesize that they may act- actually be extraterrestrials. Sure. Or some sort of uh, extraterrestrials trying to infiltrate our planet by being like, well, this looks like a thing that could be there. Right. Go spy on Earth for us and report back with your psychic powers. <laughs> One of the documentaries I watched, uh, this dude was like... <laughs> is getting interviewed about his Bigfoot experience. And he was like, I think that's why they're so hard to find. They're inter- interdimensional beings that just kind of pop in and pop out as they like. So like, that's why we never see them around here. Yeah. And I was like, okay, man, that's one way to explain it. Yeah. That's the whole idea of interdimensional <laughs> Bigfoot, bro. Tight. Let's um, do this. Yeah. So Lasperitis, uh, he claims that all of the information in this book, uh, came through telepathic communication directly with the Sasquatch people. Mm. Yep. And uh, that they asked him to write this book in order to directly affect societal awareness of the Sasquatch people. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, He opens the book with one of the more incredible Bigfoot stories I've ever heard. What's his name again? Uh, It's Kewani is the first name. K-E-W-A-U-N-E-E. Okay. Lasperitis, L-A-S-P-E-R-I-T-I-S. Lasperitis. Sasparilla. No, not that. Can, <laughs> Kenny Sasparilla, keep it going. Sure. <laughs> you really... What did you do in the on, break? On a fucking roll lately, bro. <laughs> I used uh, the restroom. <laughs> End of story. <laughs> that was it. End of story. So he opens with this story 
about uh, an old man, a 60 year old man who was just divorced and he, he handled his divorce by going out to uh, this cabin in the woods and just saying, fuck it to civilization. And he was going to spend a few weeks in this old log cabin by himself. Cool. I get it. Good for him. And, uh, the first night he's out there, he hears a knock on the door because Big, Bigfoot's very polite. And <laughs> he, he goes to open the door and he describes uh, the person or the thing standing at the door was a woman, but covered in hair. And he said, not like fur, but like if you had hair over your entire body except your face. And she was about six feet tall. And... uh Asked telepathically, of course, if, if she could come in. And uh, the guy ends up fucking Bigfoot. <laughs> wow. Cut to Skipped the, a little bit. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, because she, like, telepathically seduced the, the old guy into, into fucking her. And then when they were done, she stood up and just walked straight through the wall and left. But then... Is this one of those moonshine episodes from earlier? <laughs> but then... Drinking no, moonshine Big, Bigfoot moon- was totally sober during this. <laughs> but then two <laughs> months later, that. she came back and she knocks on the door. Oh, and, shit. I know where this is going. And uh, he, he goes to let her in and all she does is she telepathically says to him, it took, and she points at her at her stomach. Perfect. So he knocked up Bigfoot and then she disappeared. <laughs> He never saw Bigfoot. He never saw a young baby half Bigfoot. So that's how this dude decided to open his book in case you wanted to like, are you in or are you out? He was like, now keep reading. <laughs> Just from the jump, are you with me or are you not with me I'm, on this ride? I mated with an alien Bigfoot. Are we having fun yet? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he claims that this was not technically a Bigfoot it's what he calls one of the, quote, ancient ones. Oh. Yeah. So he has four different categories of Bigfoots. Big, Bigfoots. Bigfoots is. Bigfoots is. is. Uh, one is the Sasquatch people, which are what we traditionally think of as, as Bigfoots. Two are the ancient ones, which are if you, older, if you will. Old, old Squatches. <laughs> old, old Bigfoots. Okay. Uh, they're smaller and they're, uh, they're more telepathically inclined. You got the skunk ape, which is dumb as rocks and lives only in Florida. And then you have what as, he, as most things that are dumb as rocks do. It's rude. We have like four listeners there. I love you guys. It's hey, it's all love. <laughs> and then the uh, the baboon like forest giants, which he says are like sasquatches, but their faces are different. And they never mentions them again. Baboons. Baboons is the fourth category of sasquatch. Okay. Yeah. Um, his whole premise is that Sasquatch is psychic. Okay. And they can telepathically communicate with people, but they can also use their psychic powers to affect their surroundings, which may be why we never see them because they would be able to sense us telepathically or psychically before we're actually there. Oh, and then so they, they can, can they avoid can, us and they could also telepathically communicate with other Bigfoots in the area to be like, Hey, white dude. Let's get the fuck out. T- time to go dig, jump in our hole and get out of this beast. Um, he said they, their psychic powers can also, they can also use their psychic powers to uh, affect the weather to their liking. Just for the record, how does he know these things? They've told him. When they he tell- told him. Yeah. All of this information is coming through his telepathic communications with, with the Sasquatch people. Not through his, Okay. No, right. Not through his hair covered lover. <laughs> well, partially. I mean, they're all telepathically connected. Also, that wasn't him. He was just relating a story. The author didn't fuck Bigfoot. Oh, whoa. That I'm was, not buying this shit. That was, <laughs> that was not made clear. Oh, well. I thought that was a, now, hey now guys, this been. happened to me and it was crazy. Now check out the rest of my Bigfoot stories. Well, I mean, if that's how you want to think about it, it's more fun that way. It, it I don't is, want to misrepresent our author, though. You got it. That, he that, never claims to have impregnated Bigfoot. Okay. That was not clear in my mind when it was being told. Okay. I, I understand now that he is recounting another person's... Yes. Just that part, though. The rest of the book is all him, baby. Got it. 
he says when he leaves pieces of paper and pencils out in the woods, sometimes Bigfoot writes poems to him. Would you like to hear a Bigfoot poem? Aww. Yeah, definitely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like literally would love nothing more right now than to hear a Bigfoot poem. This is uh, a poem by the ancient one, Haloti. So ancient ones like Bigfoot, but smaller and sexier. <laughs> Some men want to kill us. We are people, not Elohim, not Nephilim, not evil spirit. We are first people, seed of Adam, not of Cain, because Bigfoot has read the Bible, apparently. Learn good the old ways. Time is short. Soon come last war. We all will be safe in woods. I mean, that's where I'm going. Your thoughts? When it all goes down. To live with Bigfoot? The woods. Oh, <laughs> Just well, general. To live with Bigfoot. Just in general. Um, he also said, <laughs> "Your thoughts." <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you're a poetry guy. I thought maybe you, you know, you'd have a critique of. I give it of uh, poem. I give it a B plus, man. It's okay. hot. Okay, it's hot. Bars. bars. <laughs> Shit, um, Dan, I said bars at the same time. They, according to the ancient ones, they were deposited on Earth eons ago by friendly aliens from another planet, and that they are here because they are the spirit quote spiritual keepers of Mother Earth. So it's sort of like the whole contact D idea of like the aliens need to come tell us to stop fucking up the planet. Sure. Except these aliens took it a step further and just said, here, here's some Bigfoots. They'll fix the planet for you. It's like they. And instead they just go around the cabins fucking people and telepathically making babies, writing poems. Maybe it's like they, like they flew around and they were like, how can we, how can we be here? Bigfoots did? No, the aliens. Oh, okay. They're like, how can we be aliens here, but not be like humans? Right. And they were like, oh, we could just be like big apes. Right. Let's absorb that form. It's and- their human costume. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's their meat form, if you will. I mean, their meat form. <laughs> Are we doing this right? Are we doing this right? They're like the men in black. They have, they have different versions. Do we belong now? <laughs> no, some some of don't. the aliens put on suits. Some put on uh, Chewbacca costumes. <laughs> I mean, it would make sense. Uh, Star Wars got blasted out into space in, what, 78? Uh, Yeah, it would have been the first one. So, like, 20 light years later would have been, like, 98. So, aliens from 20 light years away could have seen Star Wars and... And been like, Chewbacca, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's how us you, now. That's how you fit in. All right. So, in this book, he retells a story that was originally printed in a Russian newspaper called Pr- Pravda. P-R-A-V-D-A. I read it frequently. In 2004. It's the oldest newspaper in Russia, I learned. Cool. Shout out to Pravda. Um, About a young woman, a 19-year-old woman named Oksana. She was out in the woods. Uh, She was out for a walk, and she got lost. And she sat down on a a stump to, to rest and to try and figure out where she was. And as she's sitting there, she hears something. Uh, You know how, like, if you're walking through the woods... And you step on stuff, you just like, you know, you hear like twigs breaking and leaves rustling and stuff. Yeah. And uh, she hears that coming from ne- right next to her. And she, with the, she like parts the tree branches next to her. And on the other side, <laughs> Bigfoot's just chilling. Bigfoot. Yep. Tied. And uh, she described it as a giant orangutan looking thing. So like an orangutan, but bigger. I mean, that's, I, I feel like in the traditional visual representations, that's pretty. That's pretty close. I also think if I was ever up close to an orangutan or a gorilla, my first thought would be, holy fuck, I didn't realize you were this big. Like whether or not it was a maximum right. size? Yeah, probably. Because a gorilla weighs, what, 400 pounds? More. 500 they're the pounds? Ma- they're big, yeah. The silverbacks are like 800-ish. No. For sure. Really? Full-grown male silverback? A silverback silver back gorilla is 800 pounds? I think the full-grown males can be, like, up to 800 pounds. Yikes, that's too many pounds. We could have figured that one out without fucking Google, right? <laughs> no, yeah, we could have. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, well, while you, going, while you figure out how much gorillas They go up weigh, to 430. Yeah. Really? Shit. I thought some of the You're big... You're only off by 200%. The big beasties. No. Okay, anyway, so she sees this big orangutan peering through the, the tree branches next to her. Uh, she faints and when she wakes up, she's inside a cave and it's kind of dark and she, her, she wakes up, her eyes are adjusting and she starts looking around and s- sitting right next to her, just kind of staring at her and smiling is this Bigfoot orangutan thing. Cool. Yep. Um, he looked there for a while and then just tore up all of her clothes. Whoa. Yep. 
Yep. Whoa. Um, and he kept her in this cave where apparently he lived. Is Oksana retelling this so after this, the fact? This story is coming from uh, Oksana's psychiatrist, of all people. And I'm I'll pretty explain sure that's privileged information. I'll explain that at the end. It kind of right. makes sense. Um, so she's stuck in this cave with uh, this Bigfoot that she named Tang because it, she thought it looked like an orangutan. And uh, when he goes out during the day to find food and stuff, he pushes a big boulder in front of the cave that she can't move. So she's stuck inside this cave during the day. He goes out and gets berries and rabbits and shit and brings them back to the cave. Uh, it's stated in the story that he really enjoyed listening to her discman and that <laughs> <laughs> what was in there uh yeah that's a great is, question that is a very important question i think it was uh illmatic um <laughs> when was russian music from <laughs> it just got over there in 04 it took a while <laughs> uh when it ran out of batteries he left the k ca- like he took he took the battery and he shook it and he was pissed because he couldn't listen to nas anymore oh sure and he went out he left the cave and he came back with a new pack of batteries. So Bigfoot can apparently shop, but he doesn't have, he can't buy liquor for some reason, but he can buy batteries. Man, this story is yeah, it's, it's extra. Uh huh. Okay. She lived in this cave with Tang for months and uh, it started getting cold in the fall and you know, Tang's all big and furry and shit and he's fine. He's like, wear my skin. And <laughs> and she's she's freezing her ass off. And uh she conveys that she's cold somehow, not telepathically, I guess. This, this it seems like that would have so been much. the would have been the easy way to do that. Yep. Or he should have just known already. Um yeah. but again, Tang, he goes out of the cave and he comes back with a pair of pants and a jacket. And <laughs> around the same time. A farmer reported being attacked by a monster who stole his pants and his jacket. <laughs> what? Yo. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yep. Wow. Yep. So, uh, and Boy. When, when he brought the jacket back to the cave, in the pocket of the jacket, there was a lighter. So Oksana was like, oh, tight. We can make fire in our cave and we can stay warm and we can cook food. And also the smoke will go out of the cave and maybe somebody will see it and come rescue me from... Or I could set this monkey on fire while he's asleep <laughs> and I can run to my freedom. <laughs> it's an ape. Bro, it's not a monkey. I could set this ape on fire then. Um, no one found her and she lived there for the entire winter. Ew. And one day in the spring, Tang was getting comfortable and kind of lazy and he didn't push the, the boulder back all the way. And she climbed out and made a break for it. And... She ran to a town that was nearby because apparently Bigfoot wasn't very far from a town. Okay. And she gets returned to her parents who immediately <laughs> upon arriving home and telling, uh, telling them that she had been kidnapped by Bigfoot, they immediately have her committed to a mental institution. This is considered a dick move. <laughs> Where she spends <laughs> almost a year in a mental institution because she never broke from her story of all she would tell the doctors was I was married to Bigfoot for a year. Wow. Mm-hmm. And I she mean, and she never broke from it. Hold on. Yep. Stories. Come yep. on, Ryan. Come on. <laughs> oh, 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 we're not there yet. <laughs> Sorry. My bad. And eventually she came she became just like totally despondent because no one would believe her story about Bigfoot and she would never deviate from it. One day after being there for almost a year, she told the doctors that Bigfoot was coming to rescue her. Tight. Mm-hmm. She, this is where the psychic part comes in, because like maybe <laughs> he, co- he communicated telepathically with her, like, hey. I got you. <laughs> coming for that ass. <laughs> you escaped. Gr- hey, girl, I miss you. I need that lighter. <laughs> I need that lighter back. <laughs> I've been eating my rabbits raw for the last three months. <laughs> um, oh, Christ. And a week later, she d- disappeared from the mental institution in the middle of the night. And someone had pried the steel bars from her window, like out of no the wall. No way! And her, look, clearly, this come on, let's don't poke holes in my psychic big, Bigfoot kidnapping story. This is tight. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody had pried the bars loose, 
And her uh, her roommate said that she was kidnapped by a huge hairy monster. Cool. And she was never seen again. She never returned home or back to mental institution. So after a while, her psychiatrist was like, I don't know what to tell you. I guess this is fair game. I can share this information because she lives with Bigfoot now. uh, R.I.P. Oksana. Well, she's probably fine. She's married to Bigfoot again. They're reunited at last. It's it's no weirder than Beauty and the Beast. (laughs) Which is is plenty (laughs) weird in its own right. Maybe, uh, Maybe they're just like trying to slowly become more like us, you know? When like, two become one, you mean? I wish we had that drop ready. I wish we could play Spice Girls all the time on this <laughs> podcast, but I think it's illegal. <laughs> so yeah, kid, Bigfoot kidnapping is apparently a thing. Uh, there's a real famous one, Albert Ostman. Okay. He was uh, a prospector that got kidnapped by a, a whole family of Bigfoots and lived with them for a week or so. And then he, he fed them uh, tobacco and they got sick and he ran away. I gotta, I gotta know, like, are these people, okay, so it seems like we're all kind of on the same page that these stories didn't actually happen, but. Yeah, that one probably for sure. But like, what are these people doing? Are they just mentally ill? Are they. That one specifically, I don't think was ever a real story. Um, You're saying people who report seeing Bigfoot? I guess like, yeah. Yeah. If you, it, it, that's what I want to know is, what, you know, this kind of goes back to that thing I was talking about earlier where things are like perpetuate over and over again. What are people seeing? Is it, uh, is it a psychosis that's based on a cultural trope that has lived on for so long that it just becomes part of our minds? Like whether it's Harry and the Hendersons or Chewbacca or whatever, we we have these sort of like... Speaking of films that do hold up, by the way, I've rewatched Harry and the Hendersons this week. I watched it when I was a kid. I haven't seen it. And I was going to try to do that, but I, I didn't make it work in time. Totally worth it. All it, right, I'm going to watch it tonight. It is... <laughs> you, you, got a, you got a busy night, man. You got an Ancient Aliens episode. No, 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 no. We're not doing that one. You're you guys already the, gave me the spoiler alert, so... Yeah, they're aliens. I'm not, yeah. Well, yeah, you're not going to talk about a terrestrial being on Ancient Aliens if it's yeah, not exactly. also an ancient. Therefore, alien. Dan doesn't need to watch it anymore. I definitely yeah. still need to watch it. All right, um, but 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 I but I want to know like what like what is happening? I mean, I don't know. I have no <laughs> clue, man. You pointed at me. <laughs> I, I don't know. know. Shit. I, think, I, I mean, I, just I feel like it. some of it's maybe boredom. Some of it's maybe seeing some stuff and you know, like having some interest in this topic and kind of not knowing what they're seeing and automatically saying it's that. Yeah. Um, for whatever reason. Yeah. I think the fact that it has become folklore and just part of pop culture leads to a people not knowing what they're seeing. And instead of saying, I don't know what that was saying that was Bigfoot. Yeah. Whether it be, uh, a bear or whatever else could be mistaken for a Bigfoot or right. in areas where there actually are apes an ape. Right. Um, and then I think it also leads to a lot of people hoaxing stuff. Well, and I wonder, because you know, you can make a Bigfoot video and they'll get 2 million plays on YouTube or you can write books about it or people can talk about you on podcasts 45 years after you like yelled into a microphone for a while. (laughs) I also think sometimes about like, was it, it was Billy Meyer last week that we talked about, the dude that spoofed a bunch the, of the UFO, UFO prediction guy, yeah. I do wonder, too, sometimes if there's people who, they believe in it so intensely, like they believe they've either had a personal experience or a sighting or whatever, they believe it so much that they feel like if they fudge the creation of it, they'll draw cultural attention to the concept. Like, it's not purely mm. done for profit. It's to It's to say... No, I, I don't have any good video of a Sasquatch, but I believe but I that know Sasquatches are so real that if I just make one video with my friends that emulates what I've seen and what I've experienced and what I believe, then I'll be then we'll 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 get people to pay attention to the Sasquatch phenomenon. You know what I mean? Like part of me wonders yeah. how much of it is comes from a place of pure psychosis, pure invention, or pure like 50 50 of the two like i'm gonna both invent and believe it at the same time i don't think that explains all of it at the same time though i would agree with that i mean and i don't know what percentage that is that wouldn't be explained by 
any of the things that we just mentioned, but it's definitely not zero. I think especially when you go further back too, like when you go back into the stories from like the 1800s and stuff, it's like you didn't have YouTube videos going around to like perpetuate some of this folklore. So like, what is the chance that it is like a real thing? Like despite how ridiculous some of this sounds? Because like, I guess I'm not really up on like how in depth have people explored you know, the Pacific Northwest because there's a, probably a bunch of land that didn't seem to have a bunch of resources and shit or was hard to get to. Right. So people probably just kind of left it alone at some point. Well, yeah, when you're so, talking about the Western United States, especially Canada, Alaska, I mean, there's so much space where... Even Northern California in some places. Yeah, it's not, it would, it's not practical for people to live and there's nothing that we really value there. I, I don't think it's... I don't think it's impossible that there are species that we don't know about. I mean, I, I would say there's that it's a hundred percent that there are species on the planet that we don't know. About. Oh yeah, absolutely. But I just mean like more specific to this, like how much is, you know, how, how possible is it? And how much of it is just kind of made up bullshit by people who are bored or, yeah. you know, well, all the if, other things. If we're going, it's a species of animal, that we just haven't officially scientifically recognized. The two things that get me are there would have to be kind of a lot of them in order to just keep a population going in the wild. Yeah. I, I would only I would only push back a little bit on that in that there are some endangered species that keep going and even reflourish again in like the a thousand range of like leftover animals. Sure. But then we're saying there are a thousand Bigfoots roaming around. Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah. I get what you're saying. I just mean like, I'm saying it's not one or two. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. It's hundreds, right. if not thousands of these, uh, apparently spread out across a pretty big area. Right. So you would think even in those more remote areas, there would occasionally be encounters that would sometimes happen during the day. Right. That sometimes, especially now, people would have a phone or a camera or something with them. Um, and that just doesn't really seem to exist. The one And the second one is they have to eventually die. And we, we should, it, we find dead deer in the fucking woods right, all the time. And we find fossils of animals that are millions of years old. Right. And there's never been one piece of... And I mean, that would be something that no scientist would refute. If you bring a scientist a bone or a fossil from something that does not fall into our current understanding, they will take it seriously. Right. And that's never been produced. So that's where those are the two biggest sticking points for me on this is just an animal that we don't know about. Right. Okay. I, I, I don't think it's impossible. It seems unlikely to me that if that were the case... One of those two things wouldn't have happened by now. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think, um, you know, the possibility is there, especially in more remote locations where people aren't chilling all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I guess if this is a real thing, they could just try to stay away from people. And maybe they slipped up a couple times, but that, you that know. That goes back to the intelligence thing, too, that I was talking about earlier. It's like if, if they are a little bit more intelligent than both an ape or a or like a little less than a human, a little more than an ape, they might be intentionally trying to not be found. And along those lines, some people have suggested that because they are, I mean, if they, if they are an ape that it just got lost in our understanding of evolution, they would be very intelligent and they may be, uh, they may actually have culture and language and stuff and they may bury their dead. Oh, shit. All right. Wait, yeah. Which would explain some of the not finding it. Would we not, though? I don't know. I mean, have you ever wanted to go, you know, 200 and some miles north, of, you know, by Canada and no, dig but, around in the woods to see what's up there? How many people have? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, it's almost like horrible how much uh, there's like been unexplored space in the earth and the ocean I, and stuff I like that. So. Kinda- cool and necessary it, well, it's, we'll ruin shit well yeah okay <laughs> i i mean for just like purposes of like actually knowing what's out there yeah, not, of, not of you know pulling up and putting a fucking starbucks 
right. everywhere. Yeah. Um, but just to have some more scientific understanding of things. I mean, if I, I was, I have not spent much time in Canada, but I, I was in Alaska last year and it's, it's hard to comprehend how much space there is mm -hmm. and how much space there is in between everything. And even just in, in Denali, like the, in the national park, it's, I don't, it's the size of like several states. Mm. Right. And almost no one lives there. And ha for nine months out of the year, you can't even really get there. And, and I, so, yeah, I mean, I think that is possible. Um, I don't, I also don't really know how that then fits in with the sightings though, because if that's what's going on, then why are people somewhat routinely seeing them or are only some people actually seeing them and then other people are hoaxing, misidentifying, latching on to like the, the yeah. meme of Bigfoot? Yeah, I think that's a possibility. And, <clears throat> um, I, you know, I guess anything's possible with it, but maybe, you know, the ones that were seen, if that was a real thing, um, were, you know, could possibly be like younger and like ventured away from the group when they weren't supposed to or, yeah. um, you know... I, they were, you know, on that, uh, what that, what is that called? The, uh, the film we were talking about, Patterson. Oh, the, the Patterson. Film. Yeah. I mean, it's not like they were like, you know, 40 miles out of the city. Like they were pretty out there. Yeah. Right. Um, well, it was, they were at some logging camp though. There were other people around, but yeah, I get what you're saying. Near one. Yeah. We, you had to, they had to go to it. Right. It didn't right. walk, yeah. it didn't walk into LA. Right. Yeah. It didn't, yeah. you know, it didn't like stop by super America or something like right. this is pretty out there. And I, I do, Oh, go ahead. I was going to take it way out there. So I was going to say and I, and I <laughs> one do, more stop on the way <laughs> there. One more stop on the way out. Um, no, I, I was just going to kind of co-sign that whole, like, and I, I do think that especially when you go back to the existence of the folklore before we had the meme kind of as a culture, that to me speaks more to the idea that like, maybe some of those indigenous indigenous peoples who lived in wilderness and had those stories long before we had a Patterson film, long before we had stories in Canadian newspapers about people seeing hairy wild men out in the forest. Like that to me lends more credence to the possibility that in the, in the vastness of, you know, the corners of our country and of Canada, there may in fact be a very small population of a, slightly more intelligent than an ape primate it's, it's also not just north america though no yeah and like the the kind of to your point dan about isolated areas the the story that earned it the name bigfoot actually happened on mount everest there were two guys climbing mount everest and came across a set of tracks that were i think it was like 25 plus inches long in what i mean it was this the 50s i think mount everest in the 50s i don't know how many people had climbed it but it wasn't a lot yeah and that would have been still a very isolated area that w would have been a, a place that you would hardly ever see any humans you know you'd see yeah. one a year maybe or something right yeah right. they could have like a whole city of uh what are they calling it on this one yetis the yeti yeah, footprint i guess yeah the, yeah that in nepal it'd probably be called yeti um so, yeah, a lot of the stories, even of when people do see them, it's when we venture into remote areas or areas that humans don't live year-round. Um, I also can't totally dis disregard the uh, dimensional aspect. I, mean, I know I, I've been kind of making fun of that idea, but I don't think it's impossible that there are other dimensions and our understanding of physics sort of kind of allows for that mm -hmm. and it does i mean it, it's proposed as a, as a theory because you can't prove it wrong and it kind of neatly addresses a lot of the issues of why don't we ever see them uh why don't they why don't they up, appear to die we don't find bones or fossils right um i don't know I mean, uh, there are a lot of people who ascribe to that theory that there are other dimensions, other universes, other planes of existence that we sometimes get glimpses of. And I think 
and when you're venturing into a lot of the paranormal stuff, that would be a good explanation for a, a UFOs, Bigfoot, <laughs> ghosts. Yeah. Many aspects yeah, of the paranormal is that that's a slightly different existence than ours where maybe evolution happened similarly, but slightly different where this species of ape continued to exist or we're seeing a different point in time or something like that. And you're just getting a glimpse of it in specific areas. Uh, John Keel, who I think we've talked about before on the show, referred to areas, uh, he called them window areas, where kind of the separation between these different dimensions was thinner. And that might also explain some of the clustering of these paranormal sightings and events and experiences. I'm, obviously, yeah. we can't prove any of that. Right. To me, it feels like sometimes to me, the interdimensional or the, or like that whole element of it feels a little bit more convenient. Like it's more like, well, it's convenient because it, it accounts for everything without there being like a necessity to explain things terrestrially or like can't in prove the, he's in not our, from another dimension. Right. It right. Just, it solves one mystery with another. Right. Well, now Which we is, know what Bigfoot what, is, but what the fuck is this other dimension? And, you just and, made a way bigger mystery that we and don't. And how are apes <laughs> traveling to and from it at will? Right. Now we have some sort of ape wormhole like that. This has got way more complicated. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, I I enjoyed this take from uh, this dude named John Napier, which kind of relates to what you're, what you're talking about. He wrote a book called Bigfoot, the Yeti, and Sasquatch and Myth and Reality. Uh he was a scientist and actually did like scientific study of sort of the evidence that was available at the time, et cetera. And, um, he said there is, uh, he said, I'll, I'm, this is from, uh, from a wiki page about him. Um, if a conclusion is to be reached based on scant extant hard evidence, then science must declare Bigfoot does not exist. However, he found it difficult to entirely reject thousands of alleged tracks scattered over 125,000 square miles or to dismiss all the many hundreds of eyewitness accounts. Napier concluded, quote, I am convinced that Sasquatch exists, but whether it is all it is cracked up to be is another matter altogether. There must be something in Northwest America that needs explaining, and that something leaves man-like footprints. I think that's a hard part of answering this too is Bigfoot. If you ask 10 different people what Bigfoot is, you're going to get 10 slightly different answers. Sure. And so even to address the question of what, what if Bigfoot is real, you got to find what it is first because it's different. You know, is it six feet tall? Is it 10 feet tall? Is it an ape? Is it from another dimension? Is, does it kidnap people? Does it, you know, they're all the, these, the reports even just the physical descriptions of it are very different. For sure. So different that it seems hard to believe that it would even be the same species. Sure. You know, if a species has a range in height of 100% or more, I don't know. I I kind of I kind of fuck with that take of like there's probably something, but it's probably not as crazy as as we all think it yeah, might be, yeah. As the 100-year game of telephone has led us to believe it might right. be. Right. Dan? Yeah. Closing I'm, I'm, thoughts on Bigfoot? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean I I could I can get on board with that as well. Um I don't know, I guess there there's not nothing to all these people saying this shit, but um you know, the the different stories and the the variations of it kind of do still leave you kind of scratching your head like how, you know, how are this many people seeing this? this many different places and how are they so different? Um, and you know, like why don't we have more hard evidence? Um, I have thought about how easy it would be though to write a halfway, cause I, I could write something better than most of the books on, on Kindle and just like write a Bigfoot book yeah, and put it on Kindle and charge eight bucks for it. Get that money. And suckers like me would buy it. <laughs> <laughs> and there, you gotta be like Chuck Tingle and put out one a week, and eventually you're I'm selling saying, enough eight dollar books. I'm saying, and and all of it could be fake. Like there's there's no way <laughs> yeah. there's no way to know if if any of those reports are accurate. And I agree that they're probably not all inaccurate. Yeah, but some of them for sure are. And how do you separate them? And 
Yeah, it's really hard to tell too, especially like if you're, I don't know, I'm just thinking about like um, times where I will kind of drive out in the middle of nowhere and try to like, you know, look at meteor showers or the northern lights and stuff like that. Um, a lot of this could be, you know, city dudes like myself being out in the middle of nowhere and getting a little shook by that. It, it's yeah, kind of th- creepy to be out in the middle of nowhere by yourself. One of the documentaries. Anywhere <laughs> unfamiliar, honestly. Yeah. 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 One of the documentaries I watched was like a guy who was like a city dude who was like, I'm trying to find Bigfoot. Bad idea, bro. And like, <laughs> we're know, going squatching. They were, they were Bring going your squatching. Cameras. It, it, for real, dude. It was him and a couple of buddies and they were going squatching and they went way the fuck out there. And they got they, kidnapped. I didn't get kidnapped, but they did exactly <laughs> they what you said. And kind of what you're saying right now is like, they're like, they're like, hey, we were at our tents last night and like, 20 feet away, we heard something. It was totally Bigfoot. <laughs> you know, like Dude, every, <laughs> everything that happens in the woods that makes a sound or does something, they're like, Dude, we knew Bigfoot was here, man. Like, we were so sure Bigfoot was here. Go, but we're like, just now chilling we know. with Bigfoot, playing the guitar around the campfire. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Go sleep in your backyard tonight and you'll hear something that will freak you out. Freak you right out. And that, like, yeah. I, I totally agree that some of it can be chalked up to like, Oh my God, we heard something outside the tent and it looked fucking big. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, there was a time where uh, my brother and I and uh, our buddy Dimitri went up north to look at a, a Northern Lights thing or a meteor shower thing. I don't remember what it was. What's and, up, Dimitri? Uh, we were definitely a little little chopped up when we got out there. <laughs> and, you know, my brother, well, there's that. My, my brother likes to go hunting and fishing and all that kind of stuff. He's like an outdoors dude. I'm not that dude. And, uh, we were like a little bit outside of the car, probably like 10 feet away from the car. And we heard this animal make a noise. And I have never seen Dimitri move so fast in my <laughs> life. He was back in the car in about a quarter of a second. Yep. And I think I made the time of about half a second to three quarters of a second. <laughs> and my brother's just out here like smoking a cigarette laughing at us. Like, you guys are soft. We're like, man, that had to be like a moose or something. He's like, no, nah, that was probably just like a baby deer or something. Dude, like, But if, you, if you're not familiar with where you are and what you're seeing and what you're hearing, that shit is freaky like, everything's the, the first time i saw well and a lot of it actually is right like, right the first time i saw a moose i was like wait 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 that's how fucking big a moose is yeah yeah i thought they were like cute little deer this thing no. weighs 1200 pounds and is bigger than my car yeah. yeah yeah or like i came across bear tracks a bear's hand is bigger than my torso yeah <laughs> and you I, I'm never trying to be up close to a bear or a moose, but like you don't realize what you don't realize until you're in that situation right. if you're not familiar with it. Right. And so, again, it doesn't explain everything, but that's probably another slice of it is people just not knowing what they're seeing, what they're hearing, experiencing. Getting kidnapped by orangutans. Yeah. I hope to never. <laughs> I hope to never. <laughs> All, right. Um, all right, man. Well, shit. Uh, Dan, thanks for being on with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. We've been calling you Dan, but should we call you by what everybody else calls you so people sure, can come yeah. find you? Yeah, do it. But all, actually, just do all your... Just do, <laughs> Where plug, can people find you, Dan? Uh, everything people can anything. find me on Twitter.com talking about all kinds of ridiculous shit, including yep. how much I love this podcast. So Type. just search Twitter um, for Dan? Or? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. so just get on the that right one. away, He's and I'll see you in a couple one. months. He's the only uh, you one. can find me at DJ Name on Twitter, and you can find the the rest of my stuff at djnamemusic.com if you want to know more yeah Sweet. boy thanks for being on with us man thanks for having me everyone was pretty ugly but it was still a pretty good time <laughs> my kids are scared from all this silly ufo nonsense <laughs> <laughs> um really quick before we go uh at what if pod on all of our social if you want to holler at us or hi at what if podcast.com if you want to make fun of us for any of our takes or ask us questions or suggest show topics. Shut up and keep it to yourself. Oh, I believe in interdimensional Bigfoot. You can't convince me you, otherwise. You can't you can't take my hopes and dreams away from me. <laughs> um, and then lastly, we're doing um, we're doing a survey uh, in the month of August uh, to basically try to see if Spencer and I can make a little bit more of our lives about this show. You guys have helped us do that significantly. We're trying to get so in the black. Far. But we're trying to get in the black. So if you go to whatifpodcast.com slash survey, it's uh, it takes 30 seconds. Uh, you can do it from your phone. You could do it from your computer. You could do it from any device 
uh, you have. Uh, it just helps us get um, get advertisers that you guys will care about and that we will feel good about telling you about. And um, it helps us out with the show a lot. It, it costs you nothing, and it means the world to us. So if you could just do that in the next couple days. This is the last the time we'll ends. bug you about it. Do it. Yeah. I did it. It's easy. Thank you, Dan. Fuck yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. Um, outside of that, we'll hit talk us up about at whatifpodcast.com. And we'll talk about some more weird shit next week. You know we will. We love you. Love you. Bye. We'll be back next week with another episode of the What If Podcast. Learn more at www.whatifpodcast.com.